Continue to learn. I love the song. Learning to lean. Learning to lean. Learning to lean on Jesus. Because, listen, when I came to the Lord and accepted Him and asked Him to accept me, my eyes were opened. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I can give you one, one example of what I said. Yikes, I'm in a world of hurt. There's a lot of work that still needs to go on. And then when I started taking care of those things that needed to, I, the things that needed to be cleaned up in my life, and some things needed to be taken out, then I realized, wait a minute, God, what, what you, you call, are you calling me? He's calling me. What would you have me to do, Lord? And again, I say, yikes. He expects an awful lot of a guy. And Lord, what makes you believe I can do this? <laughs> you can be something because I said so. <coughs> no, not just that. You can because I'm going to be there with you. You're not doing this on your own. You're not in this alone. You're together. Me and you and the body of Christ. You're not in this alone. And the works you're doing is not for your salvation. Because at this point, we need to make it very clear. We are saved to do what? Good works. That is why you're saved. We are saved to do good works. We have been created in Christ. We have been reborn in Christ. And he's in us. We have been recreated, if you will, and we've been recreated according to Ephesians 2 and 10 to do good works. Turn with me to the book of Titus, which isn't too far ahead of Peter in your Bible. In the book of Titus, listen to this, uh, uh, in chapter 3. It's a small book. See if I can find my way through it. The first, the first verse. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey and to be ready for every good work. Be ready for every good work. What does he say? Be ready. Many times we're caught up in the ideas of, well, I hope I'm ready when the Lord calls me home. Well, let me tell you something. You might want to get up and get ready to do the work he's called you to do in this life. You see, he wanted to prepare a place for you. How's that go, Brother Harold? I've gone to prepare a place for you, right? He also said, and if it, were not true, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. But he's gone to prepare a place for you. But that prepared place is for a, a prepared people, people that are ready to go to that place. To that, that place in glory land that outshines the sun. Amen? And if I do so, I will return for you. Soon. Amen. If I get this, if he's if he's making a place for you, he's going to return to escort you home. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And then we will read on in verse uh, in verse eight. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want to affirm. Listen, I want you to affirm constantly that those who believe in God, those who believe in God, should be careful to do what. To maintain good works. If you believe in God, you need to be ready. And you need to be maintaining and continually looking to do the good works that he has called you to do in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And we read again further on in verse 14. And he says this. And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs that they, listen, that they may not be unfruitful. Uh, yes, Lord. Here's an indictment. Most believers are not producing fruit. Quite a, quite a bit of it comes, 
it, it, listen, some of it comes from the fact that sometimes we're not sure what kind of fruit we're supposed to produce. <laughs> I learned something, though. Uh, there was a movie we watched. I didn't like it too good, but I did. I did. It was reminding me of a of a story in the Bible about this flood that came and they built this ark, you know, and uh, and, and 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 they they populated the ark, amen. You know, two by twos, some by a few more, but the biggest thing was the two by twos because everybody was every everyone was to produce in kind. In other words, you know, uh, horses are going to produce horses and. Zebras produce zebras, and dogs produce dogs, cats produce cats. People produce people. Uh, but my point is, well, you should be. That's a good experience. I know. I went, I went, I, I went there. But every, everyone produces in kind. You've heard this before. You've heard it from me. You've probably heard it from other places, and maybe you read it in a book, because that's where I got it. You, quite often, you don't get what you want from people. And I'm a little bit concerned. Some of you are driving me to the altar more than others. And I go look in the mirror and say, Lord, uh, I, what I'm seeing in these folks, these people who, who are, I'm supposed to be leading, uh, is this a reflection of me? Let that sink in for a minute. Some say, oh, pastor, you can't, you can't blame yourself for how I act. No, but I have to take responsibility for you. What? Look it up. It's in the Bible. You know, when I stand before the Lord, remember that part about God called me? He said, you want me to do what? How am I? Can I? I what? Really? When you realize what it's going to cost you, some of us will back up. Yep. Say, I don't know if I'm going to be any part of that. When I stand before the Lord, get, get this. And I'm going, to, I'm going to lay my license to metal right on the table right now. I have to give an account for you. Now, can I give a full account? Can I take full responsibility? No, I cannot. Because of that thing called, wait a minute, you remember one of the first wills of God, or, you know, God's will for us is free will? He wanted you to choose for yourself. By the way, choose this day who you'll serve. Amen. It's a choice. It's a choice. So we know that that we're not saved by works, but we know that we're saved to do good works. And we just learned that we need to be learning. We need to learn to maintain good works. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we also need to understand something. Wait, well, what's all the works about? We need to understand the role of good works. What is the role of good works? What does it look like? What role does it play? Well... Did you know that every time you do something, whether you believe it or not, whether you invoke his name, how many of you say this? In the name of Jesus. Anybody? Amen. How about you pray in Jesus' name? Amen. Did you know that if you've taken on the name of Jesus, call yourself a Christian, everything you do is supposed to be done in his name? Amen. Oh, I see that's more like this. How are you doing with that? You see, because we are to do good works. What are we to do? Good works. good works. And you know why we do good works? Whoa! We got somebody who's paying attention this morning. And can anybody give her an amen? Amen. We are to do good works, not just to shut the mouth of the foolish people. No. Our prime directive first order of business, the greatest thing that we are here to do is to glorify God. We do these good works because it brings glory to God. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 5, some of you know this. You are the light of the world. Well, that's what you're supposed to be. Just to be clear, you are a light in the world. How many of you are breathing today you go out of the world when you leave here today? You'll still be out there and you hope you'll be there tomorrow. You'll be in the world. So you are a light in the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do, listen, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to everybody, all who are in the house. And it goes on in verse 16, it says, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So I'm going I'm to I'm take a shot at that guy in the back row again. 
just because I say, man, you're doing good. I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. Just because. It's not about you, though. Wait a minute. Here's what I'm telling you.